Throughout 2021, Suspect from Active Gang was having success after success with his music, and he was using these high-profile opportunities to promote and glorify his violent lifestyle as a Camden gang member. On June the 24th, 2021, Suspect has the opening verse and a second verse on the huge plugged-in cipher with Fumes the Engineer. In his lyrics, he rapped about the murder of a rival from 51st, Lewis Blackman, aka Dotty, the Peckwater teen who gatecrashed the Ops party and ended up being killed by members of Tottenham Gang OFB, with Suspect rapping that they dropped him, so I can't complain, and shouting out his locked-up friends. In the song, he raps that he has two Gs in his blunt, a metaphor for the two gang members, Seamiz and Culprit, that he personally claims responsibility for killing. And he rapped in vivid detail about chess shots making his ops lie down, seemingly another reference to Culprit, who suffered this very fate. And Suspect continues referencing his ops in Peckwater, 51st, who wear blue, with a slick lyric saying that he turns blue into purple when he sees red, a reference to the colour made when the blue bandanas of his ops mix with their red blood. And tying it all together with a Su Wu ad-lib, proudly declaring his status as a blood gang member. These kinds of violent but intricate lyrics made Suspect a favourite amongst fans of extreme drill music. And all of this attention had Suspect's fame reaching new heights. During an IG Live in June 2021, T-Scam also tells a fan that Suspect is still in the same local area, and so is SY, and someone in the background says that they're chilling with Jason Bourne. Hey T-Scam. Yo bro, what? Where's, where's Suspect? Suspect, he's, he's, he's local, he's local, he went to the shop, he's coming back to you. No one has to hey, yo, when he comes back, I'm gonna show you. Uh, inshallah, where's 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 uh, where's uh, it's why he's he's with us, he's with Jason Bond. <laughs> Now, despite what T-Scam and Suspect would have you believe, he was not in the local area. He was 6,000 miles away, hiding out in Kenya, but nobody knew it yet. Seemingly hadn't gotten away with murder, slowly Suspect was getting more and more eager to soak up the limelight, having generally kept his face covered most of his career and relying on body doubles in music videos. On July the 19th, 2021, Suspect would begin to get sloppy, accidentally revealing his face on live, teasing a new song with T-Scam. These Instagram live sessions would become a fixture amongst active gang members who were looking to make a name for themselves on the internet. On July the 31st, 2021, T-Scam hops on Instagram Live to let random kids rap, with T-Scam trolling them. Yo, yes, yeah. Man. You good, yeah? Yeah, what are you saying? You said you got bars, though. You're gonna rap? Yeah, man got bars still. Do you wanna hear it? Yeah, go on, go on, go on. Listen, yo, look at my face. I like it. Look at my face. I like it. Yo, yo, yo. I like it. I yo. I like it. Yo. Yo. I like it. Yo. I like it. Yo. I asked Wavy, join the thing. Why am I starting singing? <laughs> Another active gang member comes online and T Scam says that he's high because the C Mears pack got to him. My mother said, my face, oh my god, I couldn't yeah, believe finished, it. Yeah, he's he's finished, never bro. coming back in here ever again. We say you're fried, didn't it, bro? Yeah, I'm fing high, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the Mears pack got to me. <laughs> It got to me. Suspect then joins, and T Scam calls him the most famous guy in the world. Hey, Sauce, doing? I'm gonna add Sauce. Let's add the, let's add the most famous guy in the world. Suspect AGB. The live view account then rockets from the low hundreds to thousands as Suspect raps one of his favorite T Scam lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now the views are about to go through the roof. Gang, wow. What is it, man? Nah, man, I'm here, man. You know me. Uh, man, I'm just cool. I'm just T Scam would then muse over Suspect's newfound fame. Bro, look how many views. I can't go on live with you, bro. What do you mean 1,400? Hey. <laughs> You're famous. Let me get autograph. Uh, Let me get your autograph, man. You're famous. <laughs> and they would discuss their workflow and parts of songs that Suspect had recorded that they were sending back and forth. Yeah, bro. Oh, no. Where are they, bro? And did you finish that thing yesterday? Yeah, I think wait, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's ready still. What with the chorus? It's ready still. I just have to go back and get set in it. Yeah, that's calm. They would seemingly then attempt to throw people off the trail, telling their Instagram live viewers that they would meet in person at the studio tomorrow in Camden. Actually, no. F I listen. Go on. Link me tomorrow, so I'm gonna go fly there, innit? Yeah, yeah. Come, we'll go there tomorrow, innit? What time though? Call him from now and pattern it from now so we can just go to the studio quickly. Nah, this she, this she, this she, this one's due to be brazen, man. But what time's the studio tomorrow? 
Uh, probably a six or something. Cool. I'll count the like five, five, five. They're the same one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now at this point, Suspect would realise that for the last few minutes, T-Scam had the pinned comment as somebody saying, rest easy culprit. Wow, did she, did she, did she, this wanted you to be brazen, man. No, big man. <laughs> and why did you pin that? Oh my god, you're a bad man. <laughs> you mean? It was an accident. <laughs> I'm gonna change it when the new one comes. Fans would also ask Suspect when his album's dropping. Yeah, you might need to drop your tunes, man. This, this suspicious activity is due to be brazy, still, I can't lie. Yeah, no, I just <laughs> chat to him. Come on, come on, come on, come on, man. 100%, man. You don't see my neck, man. For no, sure. Trust me, fam. What are you man saying, though, man? Man, I'm gonna still... scare, man. No, trust me, fam. Yeah, suspicious anyway. activity. What? If, 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 if we, if we, if we put on iTunes and it's five pounds, would you buy it? Yeah, a hundo, fam. Yeah, man. No, trust me, fam. You man are brazy still. I can't lie, yeah, man. Yeah, brazy I'm good. Still. And one fan would even start rapping his own violent drill freestyle to T Scam and Suspect, with them reacting, saying they only like it if he really did everything he said. What you know about two man gliding? What you know about two man sliding? Upway trips, and you know that's mileage, and you upways get blocked like Friday. You must be crazy. <laughs> Got yeah, go daily. On. I ain't talking about active gang. We well, you know about hey, active gang. Hey, 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 active gang. Get round there, some rides and jacks. If you're talking, jump out, get splashy and beam in the trap and they get these racks. I you saying no caps? Yeah. Oh, that say. cap though, in the real life. No, real life fam, bro. Real life sh**, The man think I don't even think he's going to say that. that. No, no trust, trust me, bro. Real life sh**. Suspect and to a lesser extent T Scam were becoming household names in the UK drill scene with their social media antics. And with all of this going on, perhaps Suspect felt that the sky was truly the limit when it came to his career. At the height of Suspect's fame, he clearly had big ideas for high profile collabs, musing on Twitter that he will bring his punchline A game to a collab with Dave one day. And then on August the 6th, 2021, Suspect would get the opportunity he'd been waiting for, when West London drill legend Fredo, affiliated with the Harrow Road Boys on the Mozart estate, dropped his new album Independence Day, including a song called Double Tap, featuring Suspect. The song was an instant hit and ended up becoming Suspect's second most streamed song to date, at the time of writing having over 15 million spins on Spotify. The track would go on to land at number 73 on the UK singles charts, landing Suspect his first and only charting song. Double Tap was a surprising entry on the mainstream music charts, considering the violent content and chorus mainly concerned with firearms. But it was also a display of Suspect's top-level wordplay, using double entendres to describe his grisly life in the streets in a way that really made you think. Like this line, where he describes having two hands on a 12-gauge shotgun, as well as two hands being at 12, describing the position of a clock at midnight. As well as using complex football or soccer metaphors like the line, you don't want to see AM like Ozil, referring to both Turkish football player Mesut Ozil, who commonly plays as a centre attacking midfielder or CAM, as well as AM referring to the charge of attempted murder, which Suspect doesn't want to see because he wants to get away with his crimes. As well as another amusing and historically accurate bar, where he describes his gang using a rusty old gun from World War II, a common occurrence in the UK where firearms are hard to come by, with Suspect rapping that the rusty gun he's using to drill could well have been used to kill a Nazi in World War II, and describing the gun as so old that it's been around since Winston Churchill. It's these kind of clever and creative ways of talking about violence that garnered Suspect his cult following, and despite the horrific acts of violence he'd carried out, he clearly had a talent for music to paint a picture of these awful things that he had done. And he did this with striking honesty, which grabbed the attention of UK drill fans all over the UK, and now the official UK singles chart, making him a mainstream artist. Suspect was one of the realest and rawest drill rappers ever to get on the mic, and he was seemingly doing all of this while on the run from the authorities on serious charges. Days after the song releases, Suspect tweets that his story will be televised one day, and whether or not that's true, it certainly made it to YouTube. Suspect had become a legend in the UK drill scene, and at this point, fans were watching his every move. After the murder of Culprit, their subsequent fleeing to Kenya, Suspect and S Wavy would continue to post together on social media following the murders. However, as Suspect's hunger for fame rose, so too too, did his need to post. And every time he did post, he would have thousands of people watching. But unfortunately for him, it was only a matter of time before he slipped up and gave some clues. And people on Reddit eventually figured out that he was in Kenya through his social media posts. Exactly a month after Double Tap dropped and landed Suspect his first entry on the UK singles charts, a Reddit user by the name Matako Yambwa made a post on the popular r slash UK drill subreddit, explaining that he's Kenyan and that he noticed in pictures that Suspect had posted to social media, he recognised plug sockets and wall 
common in Nairobi. In September 2021, Reddit users worked out that Suspect was in Kenya. Despite Suspect trying to confuse people by tagging his location in these pictures as Monaco, he had just made a fatal mistake in revealing his location to the world. But perhaps he didn't even know it yet, and it would take the authorities some time to figure it out themselves. While all this was going on, Suspect's stardom was continuing to grow, and after the success of Double Tap, all the hot new artists were lining up to give opportunities to this mysterious killer on the run. On September the 16th, legendary Brixton drill rapper SR, formerly known as Stabber, yes Stabber, releases the official remix to his hit single Snap It, featuring verses from a handful of the most respected drill rappers from all over London, including Lowski, SD, G Trap, and of course Active Gang's very own Suspect. With an Agar Grove Street sign displayed prominently on the album cover to make his affiliations clear. Suspect would once again appear in the big budget music video via the use of an actor, and whilst this song was allowed to remain on YouTube, the comments were turned off. And this time, Suspect managed not to insult any rival gangsters by name in his verse, but he would end his appearance once again using the Tupac metaphor to say that he stabbed two people to death and put them on the news. This would be followed up a week later by another guest appearance on South London drill legend Lowski's album, with Suspect contributing a verse on the booming track Whoosh and Push, another violent drill anthem that saw Suspect comparing himself to Camden's Vladimir Putin, and describing his gang AGB as being as deadly as the Russian KGB. While Suspect was continuing to have success in the industry, his diehard fans on Reddit, who had now uncovered his location, were beginning to turn on him. In October, on the UK Drill subreddit, a poll appeared, asking if Suspect was in the wrong for acting like he's still in the UK, beefing people who are thousands of miles away when he knows he's never coming back. A few days later, Suspect would be singing along to a music video on his TV, seemingly yet another layered reference to his dead ops. But by this point, Suspect being in Kenya had become a running joke within the Reddit community, as people would crack jokes in the comments saying that the air looks Kenya, saying that the TV stand and hardwood is clearly sourced from Kenya, and that now he would have to do his drills with a spear. It was clear that Suspect was getting more and more comfortable showcasing himself and his surroundings on social media despite being located. He would post clips in a music studio previewing his music and tweeting once again that he needs a movie about his life one day, and appearing to even broadcast from the car on the way to and from the studio. Suspect clearly didn't let the fact that people had his location stop him from releasing music either. On October the 17th, 2021, Suspect released his new song, Encore, and that came with a music video that even featured social media footage of the Met Police's armed raid on the Broad Day music video shoot. The track Encore itself was yet another instance where Suspect got in the booth and used clever wordplay and cultural references to paint a picture of his violent life, opening the verse using members of the Fantastic Four to describe his powers when it comes to harming his ops. Then, that track was followed up on December the 16th, 2021, when UK rap and grime channel GRM Daily released Suspect's Freestyle Session, another high-energy and aggressive murder anthem full of dark lyrics like this one about using his zombie knife to open people's heads, but assuring listeners that he doesn't eat people's brains like zombies from the movies, as well as gruesome lyrics about killing his ops, peeing on their graves, and claiming that he's the reason there's worms crawling over his ops' faces. Even admitting that if he gets caught, he could be looking at 30 years in prison if he doesn't fix up and cover his traces, clearly showing some degree of self-awareness regarding his location here. That track would be followed up by another collab with Nino Uptown, the track Frostbite, on January the 20th, 2022, with Suspect having the gall to describe himself on the song as a block hero and the neighbourhood saviour, and ending his verse saying his music career is now bringing in a lot of money and that he's now killed his ops with success, as well as the literal murders he committed. This is one of Suspect's last public releases, but you can tell from this one that his arrogance is growing, and at this point he truly felt untouchable. However, little did he know the authorities were hot on his trail as a result of his reckless posting on social media. By 2022, Suspect had been on the run for two years and four months, seemingly building an entire new life for himself in Kenya. It would appear that while on the run, Suspect met a woman in Kenya named Halima and got married. He would shout her out in the track Final Moments on Suspicious Activity, and they would even have a son together. Suspect's son was named Arif, after co-conspirator in the culprit murder who didn't manage to get away, armed response. Footage would even surface showing Suspect on a jailhouse FaceTime call with AR, showing him his new son who bore the same first name. <laughs> Other pictures would circulate, appearing to show Suspect with his face fully on show, wearing an active gang hat, with fans calling this the stupidest thing they'd ever seen, with others analysing the scenery in the picture and working out that he was in Mombasa, Kenya. Mombasa is a coastal city in southeastern Kenya with a population of 900,000 people, a popular travel destination for its beautiful beaches. It would appear that Suspect was living a normal life and literally taking beach vacations within Kenya. Rather than living like he was on the run and keeping moving in the face of the authorities and Reddit detectives' attempts to locate him, 
Even once the internet had worked out he was in Kenya, Suspect must have thought no one was looking for him two years after the crime. Or perhaps he was simply unaware of the extradition treaty between the UK and Kenya. Extradition is the formal process where one country asks another to return a person in order for them to stand trial and serve a sentence. And the UK has such treaties with over a hundred countries around the world, including Kenya. Notably missing from that list is Somalia. It still baffles me to this day why Suspect didn't choose Somalia along with SY and Reeks, who to this day have still never been caught. But perhaps that was the plan before Suspect met his wife and had a son in Kenya. Or perhaps he just liked Kenya better and he never believed that the Camden police would ever bother coming to find him. Suspect had built a life for himself and settled down in Kenya, but this would ultimately be his downfall. 2022 was supposed to be Suspect's year. In January, he's tweeting prolifically, teasing his upcoming debut album Suspicious Activity and taking an abrupt break from Twitter after January the 21st with a final motivational tweet reading, everything you need is out there, go get it. Perhaps the Metropolitan Police themselves had read that tweet, because only five days later, after an astounding 898 days after the murder of Culprit, on the 26th of January 2022, both Suspect and S. Wavy were arrested in the early hours of the morning in Nairobi, Kenya, the country's capital. They were charged with the murder of Alex Smith, aka Culprit, after an international arrest warrant had been issued and executed. They were arrested by the transnational and organized crime detectives with the help of local detectives from the Directorate of Criminal Investigations, aka DCI Kenya. With the whole process being coordinated by the ODPP, International Cooperation, Extradition and Mutual Legal Assistance Division. They tracked both of them down to Nairobi's upmarket Kilimani area, where they had been staying since sneaking into Kenya in 2019. Swavy was located at the Aldar Apartments, where police used smoke bombs to conduct a dramatic raid, while Suspect was located in his residence at house number A308 in Medea Gardens. The two locations are only about two and a half kilometers away from each other, about a seven minute drive. Director DCI George Kenoti said after the arrests that Kenya will not be a safe haven for fugitives and warned any other suspect hiding that their days are numbered, saying outright, if you commit a crime, be ready to face the law, we will smoke you out. With DCI Kenya announcing the dramatic arrests on their Twitter account and posting pictures of Suspect and S. Wavy the moments they were busted, as well as photos of a dagger that Suspect was found in possession of upon arrest, along with a fake Somalian ID card in the name of Abdullahi Absir Mohammed. Following the arrests, more details would soon emerge of their sloppy attempts to hide out. The pair apparently had gained entry to Kenya on visitors' visas, which they never renewed, meaning that they were considered illegals in the country. After being arrested, it was reported that Suspect's wife and lawyer were due to hold a press conference, where Halima and the lawyer representing both Suspect and S. Wavy, as well as S. Wavy's sister, came out to say that they believed that they had been killed in police custody, since the police had refused any communications with the suspects following the arrest. There were matters on social media yesterday about two young men who were arrested, and uh, purportedly it was indicated that uh, extradition proceedings may be brought against them. And from yesterday, we have been trying to get audience from my client. And my greatest concern is the police have completely refused to give us access from yesterday. The two young people were arrested about six o'clock from their homes very, very early in the morning. And they have been held, I believe, by ATPU. My brother here was able to, to talk to the OC in charge of ATPU and he promised that he would see them at 2 o'clock. But when we went at 2 o'clock, they completely refused to let us see the client. So we are very, very apprehensive. You know what has been happening. You know matters of the uh, bodies being found floating and uh, we really would not want this to happen. So I am particularly disturbed and the relatives have also been denied access to them. And I would like you, if you, you can, to let this lady, who is a wife to one of them, and her, to give you at least a short synopsis so that you may know what is happening. For whatever reasons, we do not know the full facts, but there was, there was talk about extradition. We don't mind. If they want to bring extradition proceedings, we can deal with that. But what I can't deal with personally is the police denying me the right for a lawyer to see a client. I think we're having a lot of impunity. I think we're having, and it cannot be violated the way it is happening. So thank you very much. Information we have, which is not a lot. I'm Halima. My husband, Tariq, was taken six in the morning yesterday. So it was really bad. They just took him. They never told me where he was being taken. It's been uh, since yesterday at six till now. 
they, we don't we haven't seen them or anything so we went to the lawyers we tried up up down they lied to us they are in DCI again we went we came here so it's been a rough moment for us we really need to see we really need to see them we want to see them because we are really concerned of them there were one British and eight they said they're coming they were from Interpol in the morning they banged our door when uh, my my help opened the door they just entered with force telling everyone to sit down so they never showed ID they never did anything they picked them until now this they can't be found anywhere yeah brother Siad Abdahakin Mahmoud was arrested in the early mornings yesterday around 7 a.m. It's been over 35 hours. We have no proof of life. We don't know if he's alive. We have been refused to see him. So we are demanding to please. He has been refused lawyers. He has been refused for us to see him. They have denied having him. We just want to know if he's alive. We just need proof of life. At this, at this moment, it's been over 35 hours. So we're just very, very concerned. And it's been very emotional. Thank you. While numerous pictures of suspect had circulated, which Reddit commenters suggested had located him to the country of Kenya, this particular picture is actually the one that some say led the Kenyan police to their exact location. This was a photo showing both suspect and S. Wavy in the basement of a popular shopping mall only 15 minutes away of where they were caught. This is the Adlife Plaza in the heart of Kilimani in Nairobi, with comments suggesting that the pair would have looked completely out of place in Kenya, wearing Trapstar and Nike Tech tracksuits, popular amongst London gang members. One commenter even claimed to have spoken to the mall security who recognized the pair and said that they stood out and that he thought that they were American gangsters. Even going on to claim that this particular mall is extremely secure with only one entrance and a strict search policy with two security guards. While others suggested that Suspect and S. Wavy had actually been out partying in nightclubs regularly and telling people who they were. This is likely the Club Gemini that's literally located at the top of this very shopping mall. Ultimately, the chase was finally over and Suspect would now be in police custody. No more nightclubs no more studio, and no more IG lives. Or so you'd think, as despite being denied communication with both his wife and his lawyer, Suspect would seemingly still manage to access a phone and communicating with friends on the outside world, ultimately FaceTiming his friends back home to show them the luxury Kenyan jail experience he was having, where he was still allowed to have KFC delivered. Show them yourself. Can you show them yourself, Huh? <laughs> <laughs> KFC. Yeah, we got KFC. However, the finger-licking high life of the Kenyan prison system sadly wouldn't last, and soon after, photos would emerge depicting suspect during the extradition process. On Sunday the 30th of January 2022, the pair would be brought back to the UK, and updated mugshots for both would be released, and they would appear at Westminster Magistrates Crown Court on Monday the 31st of January, being remanded in custody, set to appear at prominent British court the Old Bailey on Wednesday the 2nd of February in connection to the murder of culprit. On the 2nd of February, S. Wavy would appear in court at the Old Bailey via video link from Wandsworth prison while suspect did not attend due to illness. Judge Alexei Duran set a plea hearing for the 20th of April and remanded the defendants into custody. However, it would seem that even in the face of his capture, extradition, and charges, suspect had no plans to put his music career on hold. In a since-deleted Instagram post put up around this time, suspect's management confirmed that they had been given access to his social media accounts. In a bold-faced post stating, due to unforeseen circumstances, unfortunately suspect has been arrested. As we all know, suspect is innocent and will be back in due time. This post was ultimately an announcement that his debut album would be releasing on February the 6th, 2022. And when the 6th came, fans would receive a 12-track album titled Suspicious Activity. The project came with features from fellow AG members Broad Day, as well as his co-defendant S. Wavy, and Suspect himself even promoted the album in a call from jail. That's the AGB. Give me suspicious activity out now on all platforms. The album was an impressive body of work, despite its brutal content. It would open in cinematic fashion with an intro track that had a narrator describing the dog-eat-dog -dog environment in the streets of Camden that Suspect hailed from. In the verse, Suspect once again references kids' nursery rhymes, comparing his murdered ops to Humpty Dumpty. On the track Final Moments, Suspect seems to poke fun at Culprit and his death, despite his extradition and the outstanding charges. On Freedom's Priceless, Suspect says that he's playing hide-and-seek with Trident, the organised crime unit of the London Met Police, a game which ironically, by the time the album released, he had duly lost. On the track Z to A, Suspect once again flexes his lyrical abilities, using his verse to make references to things starting with the letter Z and working his way back to A throughout the song, and rapping that despite the fact he was in jail, missing his GCSE examinations in high school, he still edged 
educated enough to write a song with a backwards A to Z structure. It also had the song Caught in the Rain, which went on to become one of Suspect's most streamed tracks. The song had a catchy hook where Suspect raps that he celebrates when his ops die and grieve, and reveling in the fact that he kills people and still makes songs, and bragging about how he hit the charts with a song all about guns, a reference to Double Tap with Fredo, charting at number 73 on the UK singles charts. It also came with gritty bars about his shank plunging in and out of ops' chests, and he would rap Free Armed Response, who was that getaway driver for Culprit's murder who had already got life in prison, likely not realising that by the time this song was released, he would be facing the very same charges. Ironically later, rapping how he got rid of his phone in an effort not to be tracked, like his co-defendant. In the second verse, he compares himself to Lil Durk, going on to describe his disturbing mindset, saying that he's infatuated with Drill, and that if you flip his kill switch, he will send people to hell, and claiming that he feels nothing when he does this because the streets turned him into a soldier. The album did somewhat well, at one point being number 12 on the Apple Music Top Albums, but it did not chart on the official UK Albums charts. And despite not attracting mainstream success, the album did become a cult classic amongst UK Drill fanatics, with followers on Reddit describing it as the greatest UK Drill album of all time. The cult following of Suspect and his legal issues meant that he would rack up millions of spins on the album over the course of 2022. Unconfirmed reports claimed that by December of 2022, the album had sold nearly 11,000 units, with the suggestion that this would be the equivalent of around £100,000. As UK Drill's Snapchat pages joked that he would be able to buy unlimited Oreos and tins of tuna with his commissary. Meanwhile, commenters would suggest that 100,000 goes towards the best available lawyers, as despite achieving glory through music and evading the police for over two years, the end result was still suspect in handcuffs, sitting in jail and awaiting trial for the murder of culprit. And considering the fact that he had spent the last two years believing that he would never be caught rapping recklessly about how he was responsible for two murders, these charges would prove impossible to be. However, Suspect would end up sitting in jail, awaiting trial for over a year, and in the meantime, other members of Active Gang would continue to wage war in the streets, and racking up serious charges.